Well, the countdown is on with just one day to those Iowa caucuses. The presidential candidates have been going almost door to door and throughout the state in the hopes of getting out any last minute votes. And of course, there could be some weather conditions as well. Overseas, President Biden now facing some criticism over the handling of the Hutu airstrikes in Yemen. The U.S. launching another round of missiles at the sites controlled by those rebels in Yemen. This is the second round of attacks on the Hutus. We are learning that two Navy SEALs are missing this morning off the coast of Somalia after conducting a raid on a cargo ship. Both SEALs are members of SEAL Team 3 search and rescue operations. As we said, Lawmakers have said they've come up with another stopgap measure that would prevent a government shutdown, but Congress has been wrestling with spending bills for months now. Is this going to happen? Will they make this deadline later on the week? We want to bring in our political panel this morning. Nicole Bennett is a GOP strategist and vice chair of the Maryland Republican Party. Greg Rothschild returns to the program. He's a Democratic strategist and partner at FGS Global. We appreciate both of you coming in this morning. Uh, you know, this is the second week in a row we've heard about an overnight agreement. And then, you know, there is this consternation up on the hill amongst uh, Republican conservatives. Uh, let me start with the question of how they're doing this. They knew they were coming up on this mm -hmm. deadline. They knew this was on the way, but still we are in this countdown clock situation. Is this the way to be running the government right now that we get up into these continuing resolutions and then lo and behold, everybody's surprised we're coming up against another shutdown? Of course not. Uh, these continuing resolutions are bad policy. It's bad politics. It's poor leadership. And I say that as a card-carrying, devout, dyed-in-the-wool Republican. We can do better. These aren't um, dates that are made up from someone else. These are their own dates. We have to get very serious about securing our border, and we have to get serious about appropriately funding our military, especially with the things that are going on in the world right now. Greg, we've had shutdowns under... Democratic administrations, we've had shutdowns under Republican uh, uh, administrations as well. However, the Republicans are the ones that seem to take the most political heat on this. Why is that? Well, I think it's, it's simply because in each time it's been the Republicans and typically the House Republicans who are looking, who will not, who are not willing to agree to the levels that have been proposed, whether it's been attempts to dramatically cut Medicare or Medicaid or, or, or attempts to shut down Obamacare. And now I'm not even sure, candidly, what we are fighting over. This seems to be a shutdown about nothing in the sense that the 15 or $20 billion that is the difference between the hardline House Republicans and, candidly, the President, the Senate, um, and the House Democrats and the rest of the House Republicans is such a small piece of the federal budget. One thing we do know that they are fighting over right now, though, is the southern U.S. border. And you kind of have this odd dichotomy going on that in the House of Representatives, House Republicans are trying to move to impeach the Secretary of Homeland Security, mm -hmm. uh, Andre Mayorkas, while over in the Senate, Mayorkas is involved in negotiations to craft a southern border deal. Both sides seem to be in agreement that the border is a mess right now. Mm -hmm. But what do Republicans want to see emerge from this outside of just the political damage they're trying to inflict on the Biden administration right now? Do you know, I think what we're really looking for is um, a solution even if it's a temporary stopgap kind of solution to the invasion that's happening at our southern border. I had the, um, a chance to go in June with some friends, and when I tell you there are people walking in, they're just walking. There is not enough being done to secure our homeland, and that's everybody's responsibility. I think Congress can be doing more. I think it should be a higher priority, and I think they should get after it now and not wait. Greg, earlier in his administration, the president had marked the vice president Kamala Harris as kind of the southern border czar. That seems to have disappeared. Have the Democrats talked enough about this or just left this door open for Republicans to come at them over the southern border? I think President Biden would agree with much of what Nicole just said, that there needs to be changes at the border, and he is involved in negotiations right now in the Senate to get that done. This is the best chance to get a deal. Mm -hmm. And I think if Republicans are serious about actually having a deal instead of an issue in the fall, they will strike a deal with the Democrats now. All right, I want to move on to politics because we can all be very thankful, even though we're going to get some snow here in the DMV over the next mm. couple of days, that we're not in Iowa yes. this morning because no it's yes. miserable there. Uh, but, it, you know, it, it comes as the Iowa caucus are going to be the actual official kickoff <laughs> of, of this presidential race. So, you know, we've seen this thing on the Republican side where Donald Trump has been far ahead. Mm. You, know, you know, all of the polling shows him 
upwards of 54% in most of the polls. Mm -hmm. It's been more interesting to watch Nikki Haley and Ron DeSantis. So, N N Nicole, what's going on there on second place? Are people now looking at the other two Republicans as their safety valve in case something happens to Donald Trump that he's not able to go on and be the nominee of this party? In large part, yes. Um, I think, um, and, and I say this quite often and people kind of laugh, you know, you're king until you're not, right? And at this point, there's no one even in um, Trump's kind of stratosphere. But what we're looking for in the other two candidates are can they coalesce the rest of the party? Can they go out and fundraise? What does their ground game look like? Mm -hmm. All of those things are important just in case uh, things don't turn out quite as well as we expect. Now, yeah. obviously, on the Democratic side, Greg, you know, the president who is you know, probably going to be the de facto nominee of the party, he does not have you know, the kind of debate structure that the Republicans have had, but has also kind of left him on the sidelines a little bit in all of this. How does the Democrat Party counter the fact that the Republicans have been able to be out there and you know, even though Trump has not engaged in these debates himself he has been out there in these town halls that he's done and he has been getting his voice out there while the Biden administration is left to govern. I, my, my sense right now is that you're going to see Joe Biden, Tom, um, much more involved in being out on the campaign and putting his message out there. He just gave a major speech in Valley Forge, Pennsylvania about the importance that democracy will play in this election. He'll be out there talking about his accomplishments as we see him doing more and more now. Um, and he's going to be watching Iowa. He's going to be watching to see whether there's one Republican that's not named Donald Trump that really emerges as a strong second place mm -hmm. and, and can take some momentum going forward. If Donald Trump does ultimately get removed from these ballots and cannot be the 2024 nominee, how concerned are the Democrats against running against Nikki Haley? I think Joe Biden right now is prepared to run against whoever the Republicans put forward. Now, that looks like it will be Donald Trump, but if it's Nikki Haley, they'll be prepared for that as Talk well. Talk to me about that, because, Nicole, a lot of times they say the Trump-Biden matchup has Biden up on top. That's not necessarily the case, though, it became against somebody else. Exactly. I think Nikki Haley polls really well with women, generally speaking. Mm -hmm. And um, if I were the Biden team, I wouldn't want that smoke. All right. We thank you so much. Greg Rothschild, Nicole Bennett joining us. So once again, good to talk to you. We'll 